Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Well, it's Halloween and we're going to go through some adjectives to describe Halloween. And we're also going to go over a song which is all about Halloween and we often hear it at this time of year. So let's begin with the adjectives. So one adjective which describes Halloween is eerie, eerie. Now, this is one of my favorite adjectives. You can describe anything as being eerie. You walk into a dark room, it's quite eerie, isn't it? It means it has an ambience of something uncomfortable. It's not as strong as frightening, which is when you might want to run away, but eerie is, oh, that makes me a little bit uncomfortable, you know, Um, but in a dark and mysterious kind of way, in a kind of Scooby-Doo kind of way, if you know who Scooby-Doo is, that's... um, That's that detective cartoon with the dog, and they're always solving mysteries. So eerie is quite common. Um, Other words that uh, we might think of today, of course, mysterious, frightening, they're quite normal. Ghoulish is another one, and that means something related to the darker sides. Um... Ghoulish would be some something which is quite morbid, something dark, something macabre, you know, something which uh, makes your mood quite dark. Maybe the sight of blood, for example, is quite ghoulish. Okay, so eerie and ghoulish are probably two of the of the newest adjectives. We don't usually use them in everyday speech. Eerie probably comes up a lot, but ghoulish is probably more related to Halloween costumes and and uh, Halloween things. Uh, Halloween is becoming a very prominent festival. Uh, during most of my life, it was heavily suppressed because of the churches. They, they were never comfortable with it. And, of course, now that religion is no longer a central feature of UK life. Uh, People want to express themselves in perhaps darker ways that they weren't allowed to do before. So our government arranges a Halloween festival every year. Um, I don't mind, uh, but it is a little bit dark. I mean, when you see the costumes, we we had... um, skeletons uh well of course it was people dressed as skeletons uh, glowing in the dark uh, marching with drums through the streets i don't understand why they can't organize these festivals for something positive something light rather than something dark but anyway um it was it was uh Nice that they had it. The place was heaving. I attended, I tried to go, but it was absolutely heaving. Now, I used that uh, word, I think, in one of my podcasts a few months ago. I don't know if you remember, but if something's heaving, it means it's so busy that you can't move. Absolutely heaving, okay? Um, Yeah, so Halloween is very popular, especially with kids. They'll knock on the door and they'll say, trick or treat. This is an American thing. I never did that when I was a child. Uh, Halloween, when I was growing up, was viewed probably a little bit less positively than it is today. But uh, we didn't have that need to have... Um, our bags filled with sweets from the neighbors, you know? Yeah, the, we sometimes were allowed to knock on people's doors and gather a type of nuts and some fresh fruits. But um, 
there, there wasn't really a yearning in it for lots and lots of chocolates as kids seem to want today. And we didn't have this trick or treat thing. As far as I know, trick or treat uh, is an American invention. And it basically just means that you want me to perform for you, like to sing a little song, or do you want to just give me sweets and I'll go away? <laughs> That's all that is. So trick or just give me the sweets, treats. Uh, so that that's a kind of new thing. I do love watching Charlie Brown, though, at this time of year. Charlie Brown is a cartoon. I'm sure you know it. It's been going on for many years. Uh, Charlie Brown is a cartoon character, and he does one with Snoopy, which is called uh, The Great Pumpkin Patch. I think it's actually called It's Halloween, Charlie Brown, something like this. But uh, he does um, a lovely celebration of Halloween. Must be quite old now because it's been going on since I was a child. So, yeah, uh, Charlie Brown. One song I want to tell you about that you can find on YouTube, which is always related to Halloween. We're going to get through this because it's a funny song. It's a song called Monster Mash. Monster Mash. Now, mash is a type of dance, okay, from the 1960s. If you can imagine mashing potatoes, your arms go up and down. So there was a dance in the 1960s, and probably is still around today, where you move your arms up and down, and the looks like you're mashing potatoes because your hand is closed. And this is a song by Bobby Pickett, and it was made very famous in a cartoon called The Groovy Ghoulies. Uh, ghouls, ghoulies, ghoulish, it's all the same. So ghouls is the noun, ghoulish, the adjective I mentioned earlier, and ghoulies is just playing with the word ghouls. So here we are. It says, <clears throat> uh, I was working in the lab late one night when my eyes beheld an eerie sight. For my monster from his slab began to rise and suddenly, to my surprise, he did the mash. He did the monster mash. The monster mash, it was a graveyard smash. He did the mash. It caught on in a flash. He did the mash. He did the monster mash. So if you listen to the song, first of all, uh, it's sang in a very strong English accent uh, in received pronunciation. So basically, it's uh, Dr. Frankenstein talking about his creation. Yeah. Um, I think the doctor's name was Frankenstein, wasn't it? Yeah. And then the monster we refer to as Frankenstein, if I remember correctly. But anyway, the doctor is saying in a very strong Receive pronunciation. I, I was working in the lab late one night. Lab is laboratory. When my eyes beheld an eerie sight. So basically when I saw an eerie sight. Uh, from uh, his slab, the monster began to rise. A slab is a large piece of stone. And if you have stone tiles in your garden... If they're large ones to make a pathway, they're also called slabs, okay? And then he says, suddenly, to my surprise, he did the mash. So he did the dance, uh, the monster mash, okay, as he's calling it here. And then he says, it caught on in a flash. So to catch on is a phrasal verb, which means something which becomes popular very quickly, you know. Uh, fashions often catch on very quickly. Uh, one good example of that is rosary beads. Rosary beads were something which some people used to pray with, 
And then I think one of the footballers started wearing them and suddenly everyone did around their neck as a fashion accessory. Uh, he did the mash, he did the monster mash. So it caught on in a flash. So it became popular in a flash very quickly. Right, uh, it's a very long song. So I'm going to just go down to the last verse. It says, now everything's cool. Drax, a part of the band, or well, presumably that's referring to Dracula, another creature associated with the knights. And my monster mash is the hit of the land. It's talking the about either the hit records or the the uh, fashion of the dance. For you, the living, this mash was meant to. When you get to my door, tell them, Boris sent you. Okay, I'm not sure the relevance here of Boris. It might be something to do with the fact that in one of the very fast Frankenstein movies, Boris Karloff was the actor. But generally, the name Boris here would be associated with Frankenstein or someone from the Frankenstein movie. It's funny because when I hear the name Boris, <laughs> and there's many Russian people with that name, I always think um, of this song and of Halloween and these things. So there we are. That's a song for you to listen to today. Monster Mash by Bobby Pickett or by the Groovy Ghoulies. It's the same song. Um, so very nice. There we are. There we are. Some fun, innocent fun for Halloween. So I hope you've enjoyed this. So yeah, eerie is the word of today. Uh, ghoul, another word for ghost. I don't really think you're going to get the chance to use those. Eerie, you probably will. You'll uncover that in a book somewhere. And of course, tonight will be the Day of the Dead in Mexico. I was talking to my Mexican friend the other day. And I asked him, what are you doing for Day of the Dead? And he said, oh, we have a table where we'll put up pictures of our dead relatives. And uh, we'll leave food there. And he said, I always like to take a bottle of tequila and leave it on my grandfather's grave. And I said, really? So what happens after the Day of the Dead. I mean, presumably, uh, the food and the drink that's left in the cemetery, you don't just leave it there, do you? What a waste. And he said, no, no, we go back and pick it up and then we eat it. But the idea is that the goodness has already been taken from it by the dead people. And I thought, well, it's better that than it rotting or going to waste, isn't it? And uh, I said, really, you believe a bottle of tequila on the grave? He said, yeah, and cigars. My grandfather loved tequila and cigars. And uh, I thought, oh, interesting. But aren't you afraid someone's going to go to the cemetery before you and steal the tequila? He said, no, no, people wouldn't steal stuff from the cemetery. That would be, that would be something very bad. I said, so you get the tequila back and then you drink it. He said, yeah, yeah. But first we offer it to our families. Oh, very interesting, isn't it? I can't imagine that happening here. My goodness me, if I left a bottle of tequila in my garden for any more than two minutes, I'm sure it would disappear. Um, and leaving it in a cemetery, my goodness me. And I think tomorrow... Across the Catholic world, people like to go to visit the cemeteries to the graves of their family members. We don't have that here. I mean, there are some people here that like to visit cemeteries every week. And cemeteries in the English world, they're not scary places. They're places you can have a picnic in. You can go and just sit down and rest. You can just wander around them. They're just nice places to be. Sounds a bit strange, that, doesn't it? 
but in the English world, it's perfectly normal just to you know have a wander around the cemetery to clear your mind. It's a very grounding place. And there we are. So that's Halloween. So whatever you're doing tonight, stay safe and make sure you keep the children safe as well because these days with uh, crime and other things happening, um, it's always best to keep an eye on them. And that's it from me. So enjoy your celebrations and I'll talk to you all soon. See you. Bye.